Hello. Hello. Hey. Welcome, Welcome to the Swoops. So um, today we are going to be talking about um, Drop Dead Diva. And I have to say, I did not know about this show. Yeah, Elle got me hooked on it. And uh, yes, so I'm now a serious Drop Dead Diva fan. And um, we hope our enthusiasm for the show will catch on and spread. Yeah. And you'll if watch you it. If you haven't watched it, go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Totally. I, mean, I would say watch it and then come back to us. <laughs> Okay. okay. Tell me, what did you like about the show? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I love uh, the main character, Jane. Okay. Uh, who is a woman, who was a, an, a model who died and winds up in this fat body. And um, she's full of, like, she's very bright. Mm -hmm. And on the same time, she has a lot of the shallowness that she had as a model. Right. But I think what what's really genuine about her is her emotions. Her emotions are always very strong. I mean, the way she feels about Grace and the way she feels about things, it's like she's she has a very strong connection to her emotions. Even when she was shallow, she was like that. So she brought that on to the next mm -hmm. <laughs> life mm -hmm. and and that really connects i think yeah. emotions connect us immediately i love that <laughs> yeah. i like that i love the fact that they took somebody bigger and made a whole tv show about her right and and not you remember roseanne yeah so roseanne never she was also big yeah and they made a whole tv show about her but they she never looked sexy she right. never looked good she never and here you have somebody who is bigger and um and 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 I think it would have been an adjustment for you know if it were to happen in real life all of a sudden you're like this model thin body and you have this other body now um but I love the fact that they took somebody who's bigger and made her the star of her own show yeah. they made her look good they made her bright they made her intelligent they made her look sexy she went on dates with good looking guys yeah um she didn't hold herself back she didn't allow herself to be held back and the fact that um she was bright i mean it was just like a great great package deal like she got everything yeah yeah, yeah. and i think uh i mean if we look a little bit into the details so the old jane mm -hmm. was very like intimidated by her size yeah. And I think once uh, Deb realized that this is the body I'm in, I'm going to do the best for it. <laughs> right. 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 Except uh, for losing weight. Losing weight. Yeah. 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 Except yeah. for that. that but that was awesome. That was, that was yeah. really awesome. That but she, it's like accepting. Just accepting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to accept this is my body and, the, and I'm going to make the best out of it. And, and she looks good. She looks great. She, she looks, looks absolutely phenomenal, you know? <laughs> Uh, and I think um, it's it's not only accepting your body, it's also accepting the circumstances and how people judge you by mm -hmm. how you look. Yeah. And and just saying, okay, this is me. Okay. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> right. But there is, there is that point um, where she says, she turns to, finally to Grayson and she says to him, you know, I didn't know if you could love me in this type of body. So there is some sort of like... Um, I, that that touched me very strongly because, you know, here she was. She was this gorgeous model, and she um, all of a sudden she finds herself in a bigger body, and and you know that that there is like negative um, body image issues, yeah. I guess that we all deal with. Yeah. Um, and and that 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 comment of hers just you know sort of hit home, because and he goes, "What do you think? I'm that shallow," and and the immediate answer is, "Yeah." Like not that he would be that shallow, but you he wouldn't necessarily look at somebody that size that way right, right. um it, it was just an interesting yeah one. and i think it's another point that in relationships a lot of times we like uh, especially like people who go dating now they take one look at a picture and say okay it's not for me she's not for me and a picture, a picture is like an inanimate object it's like 2d 
it doesn't show you the person, the thoughts, the feeling, the right. you know, the whole thing. And th this whole show is about uh, Grayson and Shane going, growing closer or not so close. <laughs> But it's it's dependent on getting to know who the real you is, okay. and it's not our body. Our body is just one kind of an aspect that we live inside it, but it's not who we are. It's like your car is not you. Your clothes are not you. I mean, you can change all these aspects. I and love that. I love that. But so few people go so deep on that. Like, yeah. you, like what you said, you, when you see the picture, you see the person. Um, I told all my kids, I said, you know, this is not something I would have thought of when I was dating, but when, now that I've gone through life a little bit, I'm going to tell you, one of the things that you should look for in a partner is having a sense of humor. Yeah. And it's not something that you would think of. Oh, everybody says, oh, like, yeah. you know, oh, I want this and oh, yeah. I want that. And blah, blah, blah. But having a sense of humor, like <laughs> being able to laugh. With your partner, yeah, at life because life is going to throw hurdles. At right, you. right. Um, it's totally something that would be on my list now. You know, chas v'shalom. Like, you know, I'm not looking for anybody, <laughs> and I'm very happy with Yaakov. Um, but I, I do tell my girls, and I do tell everybody, make sure that you can laugh with the person. Right. Um, and and you know, make sure that they can laugh with you, and you're laughing at, the, at life together because right. you're going on this journey together. Of course. Of course. Um, Having said that, it, it was it was it's, it's very interesting. Like all of a sudden, you see the world through Jane's eyes, um, you know. And you like there was an episode where you know she gives that once over the you know, <laughs> and and it was like, oh my god, do skinny people really do that? <laughs> There was something else I loved about the show, and that was the the cases that they chose. It wasn't, um, e I think each case that they brought, you know, that each person got, it was very well thought out, very well planned. There was always like some sort of moral or ethical um, dilemma going on there. And it always related back somehow to, to Jane and Grayson. Um, that was, that was I, also I, Jane and Owen when they had their things uh, there was uh, one case where um, she had to be the lawyer in charge of somebody who broke a woman's heart and she just ah! broke Owen's heart oh my god and so the correlation was right. like <laughs> he is an awesome guy Owen, yeah. Owen yeah. is an awesome awesome <laughs> guy like Wow. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I'd yeah. like to see more guys like that. In yeah. Because <laughs> um, I think good, Grayson is himself. pretty, it's a little shallow as well, you know? He's, he's not very deep. You think? But I don't see a lot of deepness in him, but I think, but Owen is like, he's um, a Owen was a match. It's a match. Oh, yeah. 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 He was like, like, you're, 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 you know, good he's nice American and he's boy. sweet and he has, like, Smart. other interests in life yeah. besides law. <laughs> yeah, and when, there was an episode where, like, him and Stacy, and then um, they were together, they were not together, and and um, she had these yoga pants, and they were see-through. And, and what he did for her, you know, going and wearing yoga pants and then bending over so everybody could see his own yoga pants, that was just very... Sweet, it's like like the guy next door, like the yeah. you, you know, like the yeah. your na the, the good boy next door. Like you would want somebody like that in your yeah. life. Yeah. Um. Also, in terms of friendships, how awesome is Stacy? Oh, wouldn't you want a friend like Stacy? Do you think you have a friend like Stacy? Mm, not really. <laughs> I think I'm more the Stacy in my relationships. I'm more like supportive and always there rooting for you mm. and stuff like that. But I don't feel like on the other side I get it oh. <laughs> sometimes. Um, but it seems like she doesn't work much. And she's having always a good time with herself you know she even when she had the bakery and she sort of like worked but mm -hmm. still it wasn't too much it was like 
she still had in her the own flow. Yeah, she's very in the flow. I'd love to be that way. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem that a lot stresses her out. No, you know? and she's got a lot of, um, you know, she looks like the typical ditzy, blonde, um, shallow person. And that's, I guess, how she sees herself. Yeah. But she's got a lot of wisdom, a lot of wit. And, and like you said, she's an awesome friend. Yeah. She's an yeah. awesome friend. Like, I want you as my friend, Stacy. Come on <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, Terry, they have a friendship, employer, employee relationship. She's also awesome. She's, she's awesome. Yes. very yeah. cynical. Yes. And very, like, but but she she's all heart underneath yeah, that. She it's does. like a heart surface, but all heart underneath. Yeah. Them. I love that. I good, love that. good, yeah. good. Um, how do you say that in English? Hagdara. Insight. Insight. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, that's or the wrong word. Definition. Um, definition. There we go. <laughs> Big definition. Yeah. I like it. Love it. Um, um, okay. So, so, so she steps into somebody else's life. You know, she goes from being a model. And again, if you have not watched the show, watch it. Um, she, you know, she goes from being a model to being this super smart lawyer. That That's interesting because like how, how easy would it be for us to oh, be step? terribly hard, I think. Right? Especially being married with kids. Okay, let's say, let's <laughs> okay. say we're not so married. So we're not married right. with kids. Because that would just that be impossible. It, yeah, yeah. Impossible. If you woke up one day and you see all these kids in there, like, okay, that's, that's supposed to be my kids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you one advantage to that. Okay. Even with kids, it's like when I had uh, foster kids in my home. So I was much lighter mm. with them. I was much easier going. I didn't get excited over anything. If they had lice, okay, these kids have lice. It didn't it's mean like anything about me. You, it wasn't right? like, because when my own kids had lice, it was like, oh my God, they have lice. How could that happen to me? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm still there. It was I'm still like there. the connection oh was so, so, right. so much there. And, uh, you know, if the, if you, if you feel a little bit detached, it really helps mm. you in parenting. I think sometimes right. I even do that like on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> You're not my kid. No, I sort of like, <coughs> you know, I try to look at the situation on the outside a little bit. Mm. And it really helps so nice. emotionally. I like that. You know, you say, you, you just like, like take a step back and you see this kid confronting you and you're like, okay. And then sometimes you can even laugh at it. <laughs> they had a show, um, they had a show a while ago where you trade husbands and wives. Oh, and I, obviously like collectively yeah, and, and yeah. we don't want to go there. Um, but it, it would be like very shocking. I think very like, wait, 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 what, huh, what, huh? Yeah. Like, yeah. So the question is, would you want to trade your life? Would you want to step into somebody else's life? Even like, not just to somebody. try it out. To try it out. To try it just, out. Just like for a date. I think it could be interesting. It could be okay. interesting to live in somebody else's body. And I think you realize a lot of stuff about yourself. There's actually a Hebrew book that Yoav Boom wrote okay. um, about uh, this possibility being in the world. It's like sort of like a science fiction kind of thing. Oh my gosh. And uh, like people have these bracelets and they could trade places with people uh, <laughs> and just be in somebody else's body oh for, a, for a time. And it, it, it's fascinating. Okay. The possibilities that you can do and uh, I'm not going to tell you because if you read the book uh, it will spoil it for no, you. No, go ahead, go ahead. But, but like... Spoil it, totally. There's someone who who is like totally uh, paralyzed. Okay. And she goes into other people's bodies and she commits crimes in other people's bodies. <laughs> Perfect crimes because then she goes back to being back to paralyzed oh and nobody God. would would assume that Scary. somebody like that would do that or something like that. I think okay. that was the idea. I'm not sure. I read it a long time ago. I don't have <laughs> such a great memory. But um, I think it's interesting to experience life. And we don't have to switch bodies in order to do that. And just sometimes to, to when you empathize with somebody, mm. when you think about how it would be to be them, and you say, wow. They, they have so much to deal with. They have so much 
Um, thank God for my life. Yeah, thank God for my life. And even a, like a life that seems like so much better than yours, if you really would think to try it out and see. Because every, every choice we make, we have prices that we pay. And uh, you can't be like really successful without, without paying. <laughs> Here and there, all kinds of prices, and you, you ask yourself, well, okay, so this guy made it in that, but what kind of prices does he pay in his personal life, and what kind of thing? Is it? It's like when when You're you saying take you can't have it all. No, you you can have a lot, but everything has a price. That's it. You know, if you spend uh, eight hours at work, so you have eight hours that you're not at home. You, there's not many ways you can do both at the same time, right. <laughs> you know? And uh, if you make, uh, let's, there are a lot of YouTubers that seem to have a great life and they're online and I'm like, but the price they pay, they have no privacy because they have to like show their life all the time right. online. Right. Would you like to pay that price? Interesting. And would you like everybody to know about every aspect of your life? And... You know, so you can have a really great little glamorous life and live here and live there and have everything that you want, um, like instant gratification on the on the, how do you say on a physical level. on a physical level, but I feel it's like sort of like stripping away your soul when you when you expose yourself like that. Interesting. I wouldn't like to be like that. You know, I would like to choose, like on this podcast, that whatever aspects of my life I choose to, mm. <laughs> right. um, and and save more for my intimacy, for my mm. for myself. You know, it's interesting, interesting what you're saying, but interesting. But they interesting. made that choice, so that maybe choice. that's right for them. You know, right. And they, of course, they choose to expose whatever they want to. You know, it's their limits, but I think. You know, I, I once saw uh, these two YouTubers and they were like just waking up in bed and I'm like, ew, ew, yeah, ew. I, I, this is not something I would like to share, <laughs> me personally, but <laughs> maybe for them it doesn't matter. I don't know. Do you think I they've reached a maybe level in they... society where there's absolutely no boundaries, where there's everything is open and, and, and nothing is private? Do you think we've reached that in society? I don't think we're there yet. Okay. Uh, luckily so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think most people do have the common sense to see, to, to set themselves some kind of boundaries. Okay. Um, do you think it's good? But I think it's going towards that end because a lot of stuff like the machines know about you. <laughs> I know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh my god. They know I'm not a robot. <laughs> Click here if you're not a robot. Click, Click the robot to tell you you're not a robot. Right? <laughs> uh, <coughs> Do you think I, it's a good thing that there's no, that there's less privacy, that there's more openness? Well, like everything, it's like it has its ups, upside and downside. I mean, the upside is like you feel a little bit more normal because uh, you see a lot of aspects of other people's life and you feel, okay, so like... Right. Um, on the other hand, um, there's a lot more jealousy going around, I think. That's a lot more envy. That's an interesting point. Yeah. A lot of stuff like I would like to be in somebody else's body, or I would like to be in somebody <laughs> else's circumstances, and then you see it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not an easy ride. It's not an easy ride. Um, no, I don't think so. And uh, um, I think there's another point that I like about this show. Okay, is that it has a lot to do with. Um, uh, to lose uh, someone because um, I mean Deb is dead right. and Grayson has to deal with his grief and also to Jane herself 
her old self is dead right. and she's grieving on that right. self right. And, and she's also recreating herself recreating herself and there's always like this it puts it it puts it on the spotlight that sometimes you lose things in life and you have to take your time to grieve over them like she loses a relationship with Owen and she has to take her time to just accept that and um, I like that point about the show because a lot of times the the message that we get from from our culture is like get over go over it get, get over it fast right. you know get back on if it's like in dating get back on the horse right. and anything. anything get back on the horse get out there and realizing that we all go through emotional stress and um, challenges and we need to take our time to process what we're going through. I love that. I love that because it's so, like, it just gives you the space to just be. Yeah. You know, things aren't going well. I, 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 I set a bunch of goals for myself and I haven't achieved any of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, you're doing the podcast. Yes. We achieved that. We achieved that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, and so sometimes I feel like this the biggest failure because you're like, what is wrong with me? Right. You know, these right. are things that I said I wanted to do and I'm not achieving them. What the hell is wrong with me? And, and, and you know, you can't, I, I, I supposedly have a mentor for my business and he's like, okay. Do a website, do a landing page, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. And I can't even look at myself. I can't even look at him, you know, in the mirror because, I, or talk to him. I'm, I'm like avoiding him right now because I haven't achieved it. Yeah. And what you're saying just gives you that space to just be right. and to just allow yourself to be imperfect. Right. Okay, I didn't achieve it. Okay, it doesn't doesn't mean I'm not going to achieve it. No, I'm going to achieve it. Right. Um, and it doesn't define you. No. It's no. like your clothes don't define you. Uh, the body that you wear doesn't define you. Okay. If we're taking, talking in the terms of the show, the body that you're in doesn't really define you. It, 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 it does influence you in some ways, but it doesn't, it doesn't define, define who you are. That's interesting. So how would you, what would you say does define you? I think the special soul that you are is something that it's intrinsic. You can't really latch onto it, you know. But but every person is a different soul. It's like ah, it's not even our thoughts, you know. It's not even our thoughts because you don't control your thoughts right. most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> So, so it's not it's your, your thoughts. Soul? It's your soul. Yeah, it's a special your soul, unique soul. But your soul is not something that is physical you right. can't see right, right. your soul no. and your soul without your body doesn't exist like right. you can have all these wandering souls all around the world <laughs> but without a body yeah a body helps you manifest helps you manifest whatever the soul came here to do because we're in the world of doing right um, so you think that the body and the soul together is what yeah, defines they have you to do, they have to do a work together they have to do the work together but yeah, it opens up so many possibilities. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> like on a spiritual level. So if I'm just my soul, if I'm defined just by my soul, then I'm just this spiritual being yeah. entity. But I'm not. I'm also a body, so I also yeah. have a physical you body. You got this physical body because that's what on this ride. <laughs> this is the ride. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> and the adventure park that is. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that I was thinking that like a roller coaster, yeah, like yeah, yeah. The front seat. So you're in that ride okay. right now. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? <laughs> I love how in the show Jane um, has like these insights. This I know this. Right? <laughs> You make a moment. Right, right, right. It's just like, oh my God, I'm really smart. So why is that? Why is that that we, we enjoy these moments so much? And she enjoys them. She enjoys also. them also. I think she enjoys them because she probably never 
was smart. She probably never um, thought beyond the makeup, eyeshadow, lipstick, wearing clothes thing. That she was, was smart in that area. Very smart. Oh my god, <laughs> very, very smart. Yeah. That, that also takes yeah. a talent. Yeah. Um, but it's not like I think maybe it's not valued. Right. Like knowing stuff, right. uh, legal stuff, right. or right. something like that. Maybe even she didn't value. Maybe she didn't value. She didn't value the knowledge that she had. Right. And every time this is like this new knowledge that's available to her, and she's like, ah. And I think another thing is um, we say in Judaism that that the baby is taught by an angel the whole Torah, the whole Torah mm -hmm. before he's born. Right. And then uh, the angel slaps you on the mouth, and that's why you have this little sign over here. And uh, and then we forget everything. So that means that every little bit of knowledge that sinks in is it sinks into something that we already knew. And that's why we, we feel like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> this ah moment. <laughs> I like it, I like it. Uh, or when you can take something that is factual like 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 some sort of thought or some sort of idea and then you connect it and you make it your own yeah that's like oh, oh yeah so maybe yeah. that's what it is that she she has the knowledge and all of a sudden it like ding like she makes it like her own like it becomes part of her yeah i like that i like that um so wow so okay so we're not defined by our bodies we're not defined by we're also not defined by our intellect right and, and, and sometimes we th I think that these, um, these things that, you know, these markers, intellect, beauty, I think that people are defined, um, like society defines people. Oh, okay, so you're smart, you're beautiful. Um, they can't go together. <laughs> right, right. Also, but also like, um, like, like what we said, that she was smart. Deb was really smart in makeup and clothes and stuff. And models and the whole world of... Uh, and and entertain, <laughs> of entertainment yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Um, but she saw herself as, you know, this dumb blonde. And Jane saw herself as this intellectual, but not necessarily pretty. Um, I, and I, I think I love the way that they just tie that together, that you can be... Um, you can be smart. You can be beautiful. You can be big, and and have all, and and still feel you know still look good, still look sexy, still go on dates. Um, all these things don't define you. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I like that. Um, I also love the concept of the guardian angel. You did. I did. And I'm like I throughout the show. I'm like this is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do anything <coughs> for her, like to prevent her from so telling Grayson who right. she is that maybe that like the first uh two i think two or three seasons fred was there right and then it just became so weird i don't know I how they portrayed it was, was stupid but was i like weird, the concept that, yeah what do you like about it somebody watching over me Aww. that is protecting me that is you know <laughs> watching out for tova and, and you know, looking out for Tova. I love that concept. That, yeah. And and I think, like, if you want to bring it down to, like, you know, in, in Judaism, you know, like, it says we're all responsible for each other. We're all, not only, like, Kalisa, Arabian Zalaza, like, we're all responsible for each other. We're all interdependent. So maybe we're all each other's guardian angels. Oh, at that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> at some Beautiful. sort of point, you know, like, you interact with people at a certain time at a certain place to give them a peach and that's what they need or to give them a word of wisdom or right. to give them a shoulder right. or to give them, you know, something. And we all sort of like interact and interconnect um, and we're all responsible for each other. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I'm, I think on this note, we're going to end. And we're going to end. And we're going to end. I and don't even know how long. Guys, be angels. <laughs> the angels do, do the like, press the like button. 
press the bell to sign up to our <laughs> channel. Write comments. And write comments to let us know that we're, we're reaching you and uh, spread the word. Tell other people about this podcast. Share, share, share. You know, be angels. <laughs> And also, also, and be just to other people. also be angels to other people because I think yeah. that's the only way yeah. we're going to get through this just by being kind to other people and showing kindness yeah. um, to other people. Definitely. I, I, I think one of the things about COVID that we, 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 were, we went through, the nice part about it was like when people helped each other mm, yeah. and you got all kinds of uh, nice uh, stuff at your door from neighbors who cared to show you they care and you know without COVID we can do that as well <laughs> sometimes just you know just to be nice mm -hmm. and just um, to show somebody else that they're important that they matter yeah and I think the easiest way we, each of us can do it is just smiling you know smiling nice. to people on the I street like that, yeah. yeah smiling to strangers and I like that. yeah yeah that's a that's an easy free gift you can do and you don't have to stand in the kitchen to make it <laughs> <laughs> okay so we'll see you next nope. week bye, bye.